I'm going to do a um, presentation on what buyers want, moving this programmatic want in 2019. So, should we? Oh, where's my clicker? Here we go. So, you can see my presentation style is usually chaotic, and that is nice. That works. Yay. Okay, so just to reiterate on um, my history, going back 20 years again with Matt, and so I do know some of you guys in, in the room, and I can see you all looking at me and thinking, what the hell happened to him? And you can see I've now got a beard. If I had my glasses on, you'd be thinking I was in disguise. And if you knew me in 2001, 2002, you'd know why. Um, so I started in Stepstone 1998, working, selling to advertising agencies, then onto Total Jobs, setting up the ad agency team there. You can see Mr. Mr. John Salt there. Um, left Total Jobs, did a bit of job board consulting, helping others set up uh, teams to access ad agency revenues, um, and then launched Crunch in 2007. I've been doing that for the past 11 years. It's important to know what Crunch doing. This isn't just a kind of a, 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 a way for me to, to kind of show what I've been doing for the last couple of decades. It's important for this presentation because I want to try and give some credence and credibility to, to what I'm, I'm talking about today. For the past 20 years, my job has been to generate revenues from areas that job boards haven't necessarily been looking at. And I'll talk about the ad agency uh, job board relationship coming a bit later. But, but in 2007, I did notice a, a shift change in the way that ad agencies were looking to buy. Um, and I noticed that, they, well, at that time, let's put it in perspective, we had Google and MySpace and Facebook just about to launch there. And so I thought that so I saw what the ad agencies were looking to do, what they were generating, and they, were, they might look at these, these um, media outlets as a way to, um, to either bypass job boards or buy something differently. The past 10 years, we've been working with agencies and working with employers directly to help them access candidates via anything but job boards. Now, that should put me in a position of, of like, well, is that, is, am I here to be controversial or be, be an enemy against what you guys are doing? Absolutely not. You guys have, uh, have been a staple of it, and I think there's a real positive future to leapfrog on the back of what Matt was saying towards the end, end of his presentation. I think you've got a great opportunity in the next, in the, in the next 10 years, and um, all I want to do today is give you um, a view into, into how I can see job boards um, increasing the sophistication of the advertising propositions and accessing new ad spends and increasing yields and give you guys some practical advice from my point of view, and it is an opinion, um, but hopefully a, base, a basis for an opinion. We're a small agency based in Swansea. We generate about four, four and a half million pounds of ad spend. None of that is on job boards, and that's only us in Swansea. You've got Havas and Penner and McCann and TMP. All these guys are looking at the market in a way, and they're all taking advertising dollars um, for recruitment, and not all of it is coming to you guys. Um, so I'm going to give you my views on how you can do that. And I think there are three things that the buyers want, that I'm seeing that buyers want. And I, I am aware that this is through a lens of what the ad agencies are looking at. Um, but I do think that that is probably the biggest chunk of revenue being spent by in-house um, uh, that, that, that job boards aren't tapping into. Okay, so the three things are branding, we'll go through that. So how agencies have changed their business model and to see whether or not job boards can tap into that idea of the employer branding. I'm going to call it a bandwagon, it's, that's a little insulting to employer branding, but Matt pointed that out as one of the key things that, that, that in-house are looking to try and um, uh, improve on. Um, performance. Bigger, uh, bigger demands for performance-based advertising models. So what the buyers expect are expecting more value for money and they want to buy performance. So should all the job boards fall in line? So should you guys fall in line with Indeed? Should you stick to duration? Is there other ways that you can set up your business model to tap into that demand for performance? 
Uh, and thirdly, data. And I believe this is, is a, as a sleep, I like the phrase a sleeping giant, but GDPR has, has, has created a hole. From our point of view at Crunch, who are media buyers, specifically looking at programmatic media buying, sort of driving stuff through YouTube and Facebook and that way, we're hungry to buy data. It's very difficult to, to segment by, by audience data. And GDPR has made that even harder. And you guys hold the key to that. And I think you should be looking at unlocking it. So starting off with the employer branding side of things, um, hopefully not too controversial here, but even when I was at Total Jobs in 2001 to 2007 and running the ad agency team, Total Jobs were hell-bent on going directly to employers. So it made my, 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 my life quite difficult. But that, that is, I think, a valid way to do it. And I think when, we're, when I was at Stepstone, that's what we were doing at Stepstone right at the beginning. There has been, and I think, you know, I don't know if you guys can argue either way, there has been a drive for job boards to cut the advertising agencies out and go direct to recruiters. And I think that's, that's worked in terms of revenue generation. But what has that actually happened? Well, ad agencies have had to, had to, change, their, had to change their business model because... The, the media buying teams of the late 90s and early 2000s, which Matt, where I first met Matt with, have, have all but died a death. You don't have big media buying teams in advertising agencies anymore. And I'm talking sort of 15, 20, 30 people who are buying job board contracts and moving through there. I and mean, obviously there is some business that's done that way. But because that as a revenue stream for ad agencies and that kind of buying advice has fallen off, they've changed the way that they... They work with recruiters. They're still working with recruiters, but they've changed their message to the employer branding. So they're talking to recruiters about this story. The story is that, yes, job board's fine. You guys deal with each other. You get your contracts going, and that's fine. Whereas an ad agency, we don't, can't really get involved in that. But you're only accessing 20% of the market. These figures are actually ripped from LinkedIn about five or six years ago. This is LinkedIn's story against job boards, right? Um, so what they would say, what they do say is that, that actually when it's 80%, the 80% of all the people you want to in, in, employ, the passive audience, they're not on job boards. So, so you need to do th employer branding, create career sites, drive those out to engage with those talent communities. So how do we as job boards look at that and, and try and attack that and get into that? Well, traditionally, what we've done is try to look at more innovative creative. Um, in the past, it was uh, company pages, HTML emails. Now we're moving towards the idea of, of, OK, could we integrate new technologies like native ads or do we just blow up bigger creative to, to, to branding? And this does good job it unlocks a bit more revenue but all you're really doing is you're fighting between each other for revenue so you're saying look come to us we've got a better branding platform than the competitor job board that you're also looking at and that will obviously bring in some revenues in um, but what they're really looking at is looking at um, the idea of how well where they're sp the agencies are spending their money is looking at mobile and video ads and any combination of the two by default, this money is going to Facebook and YouTube. So when an ad agency speaks to the uh, recruiter and says, right, you need to do an employer branding campaign, this is often happening in tech, this is probably the most obvious in tech, you need to activate that market, you need to do a video, because video works best on mobile and your audience is on mobile, and then when the ad agency is deciding where to place that, They'll say, well, the best place and easiest place for that is on Facebook and YouTube because that's where most people are. So this is where, where, where you're missing. So, so, so there's an opportunity. Let me just get this. So later I'll talk about an opportunity about how you control this conversation. But right now there is value in being able to offer that because these media plans are being created with mobile and video. So if you can turn around as a, as a job board platform and say, we can offer you an active audience who can watch this video um, on a mobile, uh, and that's a placement. It's a, it's, a, it's a new placement that you can generate some new money from. Um, what we're actually um, 
what they're actually trying to, to access is, and where this is being driven from in-house, is to access talent communities. And again, I'll come on to it a little bit later when I talk to you about the data, but where this, this, this driving of the 20-80% is, that you'll always hear is, how do job boards help me access talent communities? Not CV databases, but community talents. Now, I don't have a, 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 an immediate catch-all solution for that, but it's what I hear again and again. We need, we need to access talent communities. We want to get into the developers. Developers don't search for job boards. How do we get onto the forums, et cetera, et cetera. So that's probably the key to the, 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 the branding um, question, but what the practical bits are um, a bit too big to go in at the moment. So let's move on to the second one of what the demand is, is, is in performance. Now there'll be people in the room who are performance. I'm sure there's someone from Indeed, there'll be guys from Google, I should imagine. There's a big debate, obviously, amongst yourselves about whether or not you should move to a performance-based model. Um, if I look at it again through the lens of the ad agencies, it's where I see um, that the job boards don't connect well with, is that they're also looking at, at, at value-driven media buying. Go on, there's work. For those of you who don't know what, it's not the don't know what performance is, but this is, this is the most important graph for me, is that, is that you guys at the moment, if you're a traditional job board um, built on the original kind of um, thought process of how to deliver ads, you're selling duration-based advertising models. That's great. £350, £199, £500 contract for 30 days is fine. That puts all the risk at the advertiser's door, okay? So it's great for us to be able to sell that to, to clients, but when you compare it to, 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 to what other choices that um, the um, recruiters are being offered, CPM, cost per thousand, or cost per thousand times someone will see my, my, my advert, still a bit of a risk to the advertiser, but some value driven in it, they can control that. Um, whether or, not, whether or not that's cost per uh, job ad being delivered or banner or video, cost per view, whether or not you can charge for how many um, times someone has viewed a job or viewed a, a piece of recruitment advertising, CPC cost per click, and then CPA cost per application. And once we get to this end of the profile, the cost per application models, which I know are starting to, 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 to appear, they sit firmly on, on publisher risk. Um, so you would think, well, why not offer CPA models? Well, my argument, when, a recruit, when ad agencies come to us and say, oh, is there any CPA models or we only want to buy cost per click, we're not militant about the fact that you have to buy performance on this level. In fact, we talk about having to buy performance on, on this level, but tracking that performance and making value judgments to have a fair balance between the risk that you guys as publishers are taking and the advertisers are taking. Because the driver, if I ever buy cost per application um, um, media, um, I've got to look at that on the risk profile of the quality. So cost per application can drive quantity of application, but it gives nothing in terms of driving quality. It doesn't give me any guarantees there. So it's not an immediate catch -all. It's very attractive for buyers to look at CPA as being like the ultimate thing that you guys should offer. But I don't think it's as quite as simple as that. So job boards 2.0, horrible kind of cliched phrase way of descri describing things and um, I did have, I promise, if Roy's in the room of AppCast and the Vonk guys, I did have those up there but my formatting is gone. Um, Airbnb, you've probably heard this before, is one of the largest real estate companies doesn't own any property. So what are we seeing in our marketplace five years later, typical recruitment but we're getting there, Click IQ, AppCast, Vonk, Wonderkin, these guys are buying platforms that are looking at buying on performance and, um, and are moving into the market and getting the ears or eyes and ears of the ad agencies and in-house recruiters with the promise of buying performance um, and therefore posting via you guys. Now, to be I'm not taking any sides here. I love, I do love performance, but I've also shown you that that there is some holes in performance. You know, performance doesn't always give quality, 
um, in terms of buying performance. Um, there's going to be a tussle over the next two years because the supply chain through to AppNexus, and you guys are going to probably be the ones to drive this, you know, you don't really buy performance via Monster and Read and Total Jobs and CV Library that way. Um, it does tend to be the aggregators that fall into this. So at the moment, there's a bit of an impasse going on, whereas these seem like the ideal buying platforms, but not all job boards are adhering to performance. And so whether or not all job boards should fall in line or whether or not you think that they're that, that by doing so, um, that there's a risk on either side, that guy, that's up to you guys. But from a buyer's point of view, they're very interested in this idea of performance. So you don't have to look at offering performance to unlock some of this employer branding money that's, that's going out there or putting performance in there. To, 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 well, you don't have to offer performance to tap into it. Um, I don't know if you guys have, have heard of private marketplace deals or programmatic. A lot of what we deal with um, on a day-to-day -day basis is running branding campaigns or running advertising campaigns, um, but using banners and videos as opposed to job postings. And there is a way that you can install performance software into that, probably with the ad servers you want, by looking at offering private marketplace deals. And this will lead on in, into data. And what is a private marketplace deal? Well, as I said, the industry is hungry for data that drives um, advertising. And, you, and companies like, uh, ad agencies like Havas and Penna and McCann all have programmatic trading desks. And what these guys are looking to do in it is driving video advertising and banner advertising um, by buying um, supply of data and delivering those um, across other networks like YouTube or Facebook, um, but utilizing data um, that has originated from a recruitment point of view. So we, we've consulted with a few job boards over the past um, six to eight months on how to input performance by using programmatic. I do hate show of hands, but I am interested to, to know this. Can see a show of hands from job boards and aggregators that have what they would call programmatic offerings. Um, okay, okay, that's probably only about ten percent. So let me explain programmatic to make sure that everyone understands. This is about being able to deliver banners driven by data, i.e., deliver a banner across a network of sites, utilizing data that I know that this group of people are engineers. And the way job boards, let's take read.co.uk, because I know they, they do this. As a media buyer, I can go to those guys, and instead of buying, um, say I want an engineering audience to look at my banner or video, traditionally we would say, let's put that on the engineering pages. Okay, that's a very um, obvious way of dealing with it. When you move into programmatic world, you're not actually delivering the banners necessarily on the engineering pages. What you're doing is you're delivering it to engineers, irrespective of whether they're looking at CV advice, salary advice, news, uh, and in, in a lot of cases have already moved off of the, the, the job board to, to start looking at Facebook and still delivering advertising. And by doing this, I think job boards can, can move quite smoothly into the idea of, where, of offering performance without having to sacrifice duration right now as a way of selling um, job ads. So let's have a look at the, the argument for it. This is the programmatic um, spend um, that, uh, from 2015 in billions, which is why I set up a media focused on media buy business focus on programmatic. This is obviously across all industries. And as we know, recruitment follows the rest of the marketing industry. So we'd expect recruitment to follow along this. So by offering a programmatic, um, by offering a programmatic solution to, to media buyers buying in programmatic, there's a lot of revenue that's going to be left, uh, that is available there on the table. The problem is, as I've alluded to, is that since GDPR came in today, the way I would normally buy 
my supply of data would be to go to someone like Nielsen and Comscore and those guys would be gathering data as they traditionally do to say here, are pe here, here is a bunch of cookies that um, we know are engineering people or here are a bunch of cookies we know are IT people, drive your video and banner advertising that way and then I'll advertise across the internet. Um, since GDPR came in, obviously that supply started to dry up. But what you've got, as I said, with Havas and Pena and SMRS and 33, these guys have all set up um, trading desks to buy recruitment advertising in this way. And we now have a gap in the market of supply. What's the problem with the supply from Comscore is, well, they don't have any decent way of, of getting consent. Now, if you're a traditional job board who pulls in data via CV data, you're already dealing with that consent issue and all that you really need to do to tap into the data supply that is going into programmatic is to be consent that the cookies can be used to be advertising off-site. I won't go into the deep technicals of, of why it is, but my opinion is that most job boards and recruitment have kind of taken the GDPR thing with a paranoid sledgehammer and, 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 and um, and, and completely cut off the idea or, or taken out the mind that you guys can sell your cookie data. Um, but I think the reality is now we get outside of the, the mania of what GDPR was supposed to be and get into the reality of it, is that, is that there is a huge, um, a huge gap in the market for job boards to supply and drive this programmatic trend and be the, um, if you can't be the car, if you can't be the Mercedes, be the driver of that car, because that's really what buyers want. Because at the moment, if I need to identify an account manager or a sales manager or an engineer, the way I will try and, or an ad agency will try and do that is to drive it, is to use things which are quite um, esoterical, really. So, like, what have they searched on Google? They've looked for an account manager job. They, they've worked for a competitor. All this stuff is nice stuff. What they really want is to specifically know this person's watching YouTube, specifically know that this person is a sales manager, and it's job boards who actually know that. And if the money, you can't control people wanting to spend and put their videos on YouTube and Facebook, but you can control that data supply, and that is an incredibly valuable marketplace to tap into. So if I was giving you the five things that I would do um, as a job board is look at your marketing technology that you offer right now. Is it the catch-all word programmatic? Does it really allow um, people to, to, to give their innovative creative um, media plans to you to basically tap into mobile and video? What are you offering in terms of performance? If it's not for the jobs, is there another performance model that you are offering so you can tap into those media plans from ad agencies that you're not getting? How are you using your data and are you building communities that people can tap into? So hopefully that's given you some practical advice. Um, the formatting wasn't too distracting. There's any questions or we move on. There was a build-up, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Rob. I'm uh, Rob Brower from Job Rapido. Uh, first of all, fantastic presentation. Thank uh, you. Rob. Really, really helpful. Uh, we've been in the business the same time. Yes. <laughs> I start. <laughs> we remember each other. But th the question is about the um, the talent communities that you were talking about. Um, if you want to access those talent communities with the data that we have today. Um, in, the, in the job board CV data, do you, do you think that's enough or do we all need to move to behavioral data? What, um, what the people we're talking to in-house and, and ad agencies being a kind of a, a, a view on that is when they're imagining the talent communities, what they're asking us to do at Crunch is to drive advertising into things like forums, LinkedIn groups, um, and advertising in that in that way because it's a quite a direct way of thinking. Of, well, well, it's community. It must mean people talking on a forum together and having a chat. That isn't the reality of the the the, the communities in any other part of the marketing um, industry. When they're talking about communities, they're talking about linked 
people together who are who necessarily aren't searching for jobs right now. Um, and that that's where, you know, from Job Rapido, you're gathering a lot of data and insight into the understanding of, well, these people are searching right now. And remember what these the, the, what people are really talking about when they 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 they're, they're talking about tapping into what the passive market. The technology out there allows you to utilize your data to map what that community might look like outside. Exactly. So you don't have, it's not about getting into forums, it's about saying, well, we know these 10,000 people behave like this. So, so yes, yeah, so to answer your question, behavioral data is very important. And if you've heard of it, similar audiences, that kind of idea. Mm. Whereas you can say, here's 10,000 very strong pieces of information that these are front end developers. Let's map that across the internet and open up a community of 200,000. Exactly, yeah. But Job Rapido are driving that because you're the seed data behind that. And, and if your competitor is better at seeding that data and detailing that data, mm. their mapped community is going to be better than yours. And so you then fight for mapping of the data in a way. People buy Very that. Very clear. Thank you. Any more questions? Hi, I'm Dale from Stepstone. Um, Hello. So, in terms of the operation of that, is uh, is an agency then happy to take that data seed themselves, or would they prefer the job board to operate the campaign for them, or do they care? Yeah, yeah. It's, thanks for that question. It's a good question because it, when I put the private marketplace up, I, I've stuff. I felt that I was probably going to go too technical on that, and it wasn't the place for it. But the private marketplaces is what the ad agencies are. Are starting to, to look for so if there's um, so I know the Guardian and LinkedIn um, do this very well they will um, if I speak to those guys they will offer me uh, a data supply a private marketplace deal which I know which can plug into my programmatic systems um, and as I say you've got the big ad agencies out there doing that now having specific programmatic desks I know that because we've helped build most of them um, and most of the other small ad agencies are, are now looking at, at, at doing that. So, yeah, private marketplace deals. You guys at Stepstone will run it. You'll, ha you'll have an ad server, right? I don't know which one you'll run, but I, I should imagine for the vast majority of you, your ad servers, there's a lot of dormant technology in there that you don't actually tap into and utilize, and private marketplace is a good indicator. If you look into that and ask your ad ops team and say, do we do private marketplaces? Because people are buying them, then I think you, it might be even case of a flick of a switch. The advantage of, of doing that private marketplace is that the programmatic, it's a, quite a simple um, idea, but the programmatic media spend that the ad agencies will have on their media plans is often separate to their job board spend. It's a different thing. You're not cannibalizing it. The, the, the recruiter is saying, do my job boards, that's my active market, and then here is a whole bunch of extra money for the passive market, and can you run banners and videos to build our employer brand? What they mean by build employer brand is <laughs> get passive, activate passive the audience to come through and apply to us, um, and they'll use these PMP deals to do that. Okay, I'm Lars from Eurojob Sites. Hiya. And uh, we make all these niche job boards. So, I mean, I thought it was very interesting the graph you had where we're moving towards increased publisher risk from cost per view to cost per click towards cost per application. Yeah. Um, of course, as an employer, I would want to get my job ad on as many platforms as possible if I'm only playing, paying for the applications. Mm -hmm. But yep. for us, as a niche job board, you could say we have a promise to our audience that we're a low volume but high quality um, job site. Like, so if I'm a, you know, a, a research scientist, I only go to this site because I know that like 90% of the jobs will be interesting to me on that site. But yeah. in fact, it's, it would be interesting for the employers to post their jobs on as many sites as possible. They know they're just going to pay if there's any if there's applications. But we as a job board editor or publisher, we would run a risk of just swamping our job board with lots of uninteresting jobs to our audience. 
and, and we would risk that you know, we wouldn't really make money on most of the jobs because they might just be one application. So yeah. we, you know, our initial reaction would be to say, no, we don't want to just become another Indeed. You know, we want to have a focused audience that we can get focused jobs so that you know, we can actually make an interesting type of content for them so they will apply for the job that are relevant for them. So we don't want, um, we don't think the cost per click or cost per application will work for niche job boards. I don't think it will work as a scale. I think what you've got to do is, um, I think you, first of all, I think you're right. That's, that, that, that's great. And I agree with you. I think niche job boards um, definitively are probably, ex are ex exist because I think when you speak to the, there's a there's a panel next. I think it's the, the, probably a question for those guys in terms of in terms of what they want in house. They just want people for their jobs, right? The tactics by which they get people to to their job is kind of secondary, really, because they're, they're saying, look, if it is on mass broadcast of the job, that's great. But that but that on mass broadcast and playing per application, as I said, has a cost to it. It's it's not risk free for the for the actual recruiter. It might be attractive for that for an ad agency to do that to go. Yay, we've got a thousand applications for you. But we know again and again it's quality that they just want that one application of the person that they want to hire for that one job. That's the truth. So niche job boards have got a very very strong proposition to do that. And you don't have to move to duration because nothing I've said today means this is 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 supposed to be a gut punch in terms of if you guys don't move here. You as it's a, I think it's a, a scale choice. I think the argument that you're saying is you pay for quality, therefore you pay us for duration because that duration we invest in content and build a talent community. Just sits in your sales store is an argument, and that just makes us, makes it easier. If you jump straight to, we'll offer you CPA. What the buyers hear is low quality. So you've got to then, so then people selling CPA have then got to fight against how they're selling quality. So I don't think you have to move down that, but there is a, there is a drive to performance somewhere up that line. 